<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to present you the IBOS. Um, so as you probably understood uh, from the previous presentation, the IBOS is kind of the major uh, infrastructure that uh, connects all the, the, the data together. Uh, so it's not uh, like a closed uh, proprietary uh, thing that we developed. It uh, sent a set of inter interoperable components uh, uh, that are mostly open source. And so it allows the farmer, the farm management system to evolve and integrate new, com new components. Uh, it's very easy to add, to add for example, a, a new model to the set of existing one. Uh, so the main component of the uh, IBOS is, uh, is its, its data core. It's where all the data are stored, and uh, the data core connects the, connects uh, the data supply, suppliers. Uh, so it will be the sensor that are installed on the, on the site, and the data coming from third-party clouds. Uh, so we have that for from OxyGuard and, and BioCyanor. <clears throat> Uh, and it connects those data supplier to uh, the data consumer, so which are the visualization interface that the user will use, and also the data processors, uh, which are all the models that we that we use uh, in in the project. So, the video analysis and and feeding optimizer that Nicola presented to you, the fish met that uh, uh, Sergey will present you later. Uh, and some other that will not presented be that we not be presented here, but for example, the echo sender, it's uh, installed in another uh, test case, uh, not here in Aquabiotech. Uh, so all these data are uh, are connected with the the use of uh, our main connector that I will present uh, later. Okay. Uh, so just more information on the IBOS data core. So it's uh, NGSILD compliant context broker. So um, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you are not familiar with what NGS, NGSILD might, might mean. Uh, but mainly what you have to understand is that uh, it's an information data model. So it's basically the way that you will decide to represent your data in, in, in your system. And uh, for NGSILD, it's basically you have a, an you always have an entity. Uh, so, for example, in high efficiency, oh, sorry, it will be a fish tank or a sensor. And this entity has some properties, uh, which will be the actual measurements of uh, of, uh, of of data. So, for a fish tank, it will be water temperature, number of fish, those type of things. And uh, both entity and properties can have relationship. For example, a water temperature, it will have a, a relationship measured by, which, which will link it to a sensor. So what you have to understand is basically that NGCLD uh, allows to have a, a, an environment of linked data. So you always know uh, what is coming from where. Uh, so you have a water temperature, you will already know that it's part of this fish tank. It has been measured by this sensor. Uh, and so on. So it's uh, it's uh, a norm basically that you have to follow to 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 store your data. Uh, and it, it also define uh, an API. So it's the way that we will access the data. So querying it, uh, subscribing to information, uh, and uh, patching new information. Uh, and so it means that every time we need to add some data to the data core or, or, or get some data from the data core, uh, we'll just use a HTTP request. Uh, so these are some examples of, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with that, but it, it is a, a protocol to, to send and get data. Um, and so the IBOS data core has been published uh, as an open, an open source component uh, under the AP, Apache 2.0, so it's it's open source, uh, and it has been accepted as a generic enabler of the Fewer Foundation. So Fewer it's a, a major uh, European foundation that uh, promotes inter interoperable data. So it's it's just to say that we are uh, we are we have developed something that is uh, that is uh, as easy as possible to use for others. Um, 
and so on, since we need to 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 go to use HTTP request uh, to, to to patch data on the iBoss data core, uh, we use connectors because uh, you, you know that uh, when uh, a sensor is measuring data, it will not uh, do some HTTP request itself. It will probably use uh, probably use some other protocol. Uh, so we use uh, NIFI in efficiency. Uh, it's uh, it's um, an interface that uh, allowed the creation of and visual management of directed graphs of process. So you have a set of uh, processors that uh, follow each other and then and, and do some things of the data. So it means that you can uh, use a processor initially to receive data from any from any protocol, for example, uh, read a CSV file or you uh, consume MQTT a message. And then you will apply some modification to it to, in the end, uh, patch it in the data um, in the in the data core with an HTTP request. Uh, so each processor has its uh, has a lot of uh, properties, and you can uh, uh, modify. So it's a it's very complete uh, tool. Uh, it's also an open source tool. It has an existing catalog of nearly 400 processors. Uh, it allows a lot of things like managing error, like for example, if something fails, you can send an email or an alert to someone. Uh, so it's the main tool that we use. Uh, and so all these data, when they are sent to to the to the iBot data core, we use a visualization visualization interface to 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 display them to the user. So in our case, it's Grafana, also an open source uh, uh, an open source software. Uh, so here I give you some example of what we, we are measuring. So it's uh, the fish information for tank three uh, here. So we monitor the number of fish to evaluate. Uh, we have the daily consume feed uh, every day that is patched uh, automatically. Uh, the the body mass of the fish, so it it is allow you to have a visual interface of what is going on in your in your tank. Um, so we also monitor water quality um, water quality parameter. Uh, here it, we have it for all tanks. Uh, and so uh, the 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 tool is uh, very is quite performant. You can zoom in wherever you want. You can change the time period that you want to display. Uh, you can also apply some uh, some aggregation if you want to. Uh, it doesn't interest you to have the water the dissolved oxygen uh, for each hour. You can aggregate it to one day within the the um, the display interface. Uh, uh, so these are the behavioral data that we monitor, so that you already see quite a bit in, uh, in Nicolas' presentation. Uh, but basically, we have a sensor that uh, that uh, can uh, yeah, that send us uh, information when the feeder is active. So here you can see on one day we we have mostly a four feeding period, and uh, you can zoom in. Zoom in. You have a very uh, precise. Uh, uh, information on exactly uh, on which uh, minute or even seconds the the feeding has occurred. Uh, and uh, also more information, you can have some uh, uh, some internal monitoring of, of what is going on in, in your device. Uh, here it's the device that uh, that that give us this information. Uh, so you, you can you can be informed when, when there is a problem on your device. Uh, so that's all I have I had to show you for this brief presentation of the iBoss. So yeah, what you have to understand is that uh, what you have to keep in mind is that the main uh, interface that connects all parts of uh, of what we are doing uh, to display it. Thank you for your attention.